In this video, we will learn how to take an organic shape, such as this bicycle seat, and build it in such a way that it can be made perfectly symmetrical. Not only do we want to make it symmetrical, but when the two halves are put together, we want to do so in such a way that the halves blend together perfectly without any steps or peaks or valleys between them. This is easier said than done because for a long shape like this, we would normally do a loft starting from this end and going to this end, have a series of profiles on planes in this direction, and then have guide curves going from nose to tail. This is what a starter file for that seat would look like with my profiles and my guide curves. And the two ends are just single points. Whenever we have a loft that has the profile planes perpendicular to the mirror plane, it's generally hard to mirror that loft in such a way that we will get a seamless join between the two halves. Let me show you what I mean. I'll just roll this back. Here we have the original loft, and then when we mirror it, it looks like we have a perfectly symmetrical bike seat, which it is, and everything meets neatly on this join line, but if we turn on the zebra stripes and zoom in, we see that the surfaces do not match up perfectly. They actually match, but they are not tangent to each other and do not have the same curvature as each other where they join up. In this case, it's not overly severe, but if this was a production product or we were trying to do a rendering, I'll turn on real view, we would see that we would have this disjoint in our reflections. Now if we were tackling this problem with pure surfaces, this would not be a big issue, but the goal here is to try to do this so solely with solid modeling. This is mainly because this is a beginning class and we're not ready yet to utilize surfaces. And as a result, we are going to have to do a few little workarounds in order to get our mirrored shapes to work out properly. Before I go any further, let me just say that from now on, instead of using the loft tool, I will be using the boundary tool. If you know how to use the loft, you already know how to use the boundary. Boundary has a few more features available that loft does not, but the concept is all the same, and the feature manager for it is pretty much the same as well. Beginning with the starter file, I already have pre-made all the profile sketches, I have a front layout and a top layout and already made ahead of time from those layouts. It's a top guide, a bottom guide, and an outer guide which is made by projecting two curves that have been copied from the front and top layouts. Making the boundary is simple. We will choose boundary boss slash base instead of loft. And here instead of having profiles and guide curves, the boundary tool gives us direction one and direction two. The simplest thing to do is just treat this just like the original loft tool. And for consistency, put your profiles in the direction one box and put your guide curves in the direction two box. Clicking on my feature tree, put my profiles into direction one, starting with profile one, which is a single point, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And in direction two, I will select my guide curves, just as if I was making a loft. Here we see the completed boundary. I'll turn off the sketches. It looks just like a loft. What we want to do is mirror this over. I will mirror the body. Just like I showed before, if I use the evaluate tool and go to zebra stripes, I will see a mismatch at the join line. Now let's say that mismatch wasn't very great. I wasn't overly concerned about it. And I wanted to go ahead and shell this, which is the next step in this process. I'm going to go ahead and use the shell tool. We 
with a thickness of 3 millimeters. It says the thickness value is greater than the minimum radius of curvature. That's okay, I think this will work anyway. And here we see that the shell operation failed to complete. The reason for this is that our boundary starts at a single point and finishes with a single point. What happens as a result of this is we end up with what are called degenerate points at either end of our boundary. Demonstrate why this occurred. When SOLIDWORKS makes a complex shape like a loft or a boundary, the surface is created by creating a mesh. The lines cross each other in two different directions and the result is that each cell of the mesh has four sides. If we have made a boundary that starts at a single point and goes to a single point, the mesh is forced to scrunch down at the very end so that it no longer has four sides but only has three sides. This causes a lot of problems with the mathematical calculations and what happens right at this point is a little ripple will tend to be in the surface. What's really happening is there is a fourth little leg to the four-sided mesh in that area but it's extremely tiny and difficult to see and this is what's causing the ripple. It's that ripple that is causing the shell to fail. That little point at the tip in the tail is what we call a degenerate point where all the calculations break down and we get that ripple. Now to get around this little problem we're going to use a little trick. What we will do is cut a swath out of the middle of this construction which will get rid of this degenerate point and it will allow us to build a new boundary going from this side to this side that we can then use to blend together the two halves of the seat. So we'll get two problems solved at once. One will be to get rid of the degenerate points and the other is to properly blend these two halves together. On my right plane I'll draw a new sketch. It's nothing more than a rectangle which is symmetrical about a center line going through the origin. and I will make it about 10 millimeters wide and use that to plow out the center of the seat. I want to keep all bodies leaving me with two solid bodies in my model now. Now before my boundaries were created by joining together a series of profiles running in this direction from nose to tail. Now when we build this new center section that's going to join the two halves back together again, we're actually going to make a boundary going in this direction, not in this direction. The good thing about that is now the profile planes will be parallel to mirror plane, which will allow us to more easily build a model that can be blended together. One thing people don't realize is that when they make a loft or boundary is that they do not have to necessarily loft from a profile sketch to a profile sketch. They can also loft from the face of a solid to another face of a solid provided those so faces are either the very beginning or the very end of the construction. So again using the boundary tool I will click on this face which highlights the entire face and what it's going to do is identify the edges of that face and use that as the profile for the boundary. Then I'm going to click on this face and we see it's highlighting a construction between the two. On face number one, I want to change none to curvature to face. What that will do is take this new boundary we are creating and shape it in such a way that its curvature matches the curvature of the face that it's joining to. Do the same for the second face. Change this from none to curvature to face. Now if we go ahead and evaluate with the zebra stripes, we see that this bridging section perfectly blends together the two halves of the seat. There is a little problem, however, and I've rolled the boundary back here to demonstrate it. When we cut the center out of the seat, 
because the seat is curved on the top, what that did was made the new edges of the seat no longer match up with the original layout sketch of the seat. So the seat, in fact, has gotten smaller when viewed from the front view. You can see that clearly here and here. And if we look at the top view and compare this point on the cut seat with where the original point was in the top view sketch, we can see that this has been cut back quite a bit because of the curvature of the seat in this direction. If I roll the feature tree forward again to reintroduce the boundary that bridges between the two halves, I can see that what's happening is the new boundary is not quite matching up with the original intention of the top layout sketch. or the front layout sketch. So the boundary is just simply bridging across, trying to blend together the two halves of the seat, but has no knowledge of our original layout. What we want to do is modify this boundary to include a profile that is in between the two faces here, and that profile will pull the boundary surfaces back out to the intended location defined by the layout sketch. So I'm going to just to make this easy, delete the boundary. And what I want to do is create a profile between these two faces that is simply a copy of my front layout. And that will capture the upper and lower guide. And it will be one contiguous two-dimensional profile that will be blended in with the profile created by this face and this face. The key here is to make a copy of the front layout, not to actually use the front layout. We will do that by using the convert entities command in a new sketch. So starting a new sketch on the front plane, I will then copy these two lines using convert entities. And finish the sketch. Now to make sure I don't accidentally pick any of my layout sketches when making the new boundary, I'll just go ahead and hide these. Now I will remake that middle boundary, the bridging boundary, this time clicking on this face, this new profile sketch, and this face. I will set the first face to curvature to face the second face to curvature to face. And just for good measure, I will set this sketch, the profile in the middle, which is right on the front plane, to normal to profile. That will also guarantee that when this boundary is constructed, that right at the front plane, the direction of the surfaces all along the boundary will be normal to the front plane giving us what should be a very good mirror image across the front. Now if I go ahead and look at this on the front view once again, and I will turn on my front layout, I can see that the edges of my boundary now match up with the original intended edges of the front view layout. This means that the shape of the boundary matches our original design intent as expressed by our layout sketch. Our last step for this bicycle seat then is simply to shell it. This time we have three surfaces we need to select for exclusion from the shell. Three millimeters. You see it's made a very clean shell with three pieces on the underside. You'll recall before that this failed because of the problem with the degenerate point at the nose and the tail. Now to finish this off, we can simply add a one millimeter radius to both the outer and the inner edge. giving us our completed design.